Good morning. In today's era of rapid technological advancement, the milestones covered by artificial intelligence has brought the world on its toes. Especially in the healthcare industry, AI has been a game changer. It's a great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, who is going to tell us about how AI is revamping the healthcare sector. Our speaker is CEO of Mind and Mom and author of Myths and Millennials. She is also a recipient of Women with Impact Award in Product Management. She has extensively worked as a product manager and UI UX analyst in PayPal and Cognizant. She also has a podcast called The Broadcast. We are honored to have Ms. Padmini Janki among us today. We welcome you, ma'am. I want to make it interactive. I'm open to questions. Uh, one thing that I wanted to make uh, you guys understand is that this is not going to talk about more on technology or Python or how it's going to work, uh, but in general, how AI deep learning or machine learning is um, impacting healthcare in a high level. So I'm just giving you a context so to keep the expectation right on the overall uh, conversation. So can we start? Are you guys ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Cool. Awesome. So I'm going to uh, share my screen now. Uh, tell me the moment you're able to see my screen, all right? Are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay, good. So healthcare and artificial intelligence. And I'm sure um, when I see mo most of you joining here, I can understand that most of you are also interested in AI, ML, and pretty much you know following how the healthcare is doing during these times and how are we saving lives and so many things. So I'm going to have that assumption and I'm not going to really explain too much on the you know jargons that we usually use on the AI front. So what I have done is um, I've been a product manager at PayPal as an AI ML product manager for disputes where it's more about um, marketplace AI. When somebody is keep disputing about products, when there is a buyer abuse, when there is a seller abuse, and how do you save more money or how do you save more losses for the company through AIML is what I have done most of my life and my whole career uh, since 2012 and types. And then I think the Laufa Healthcare happened in uh, 2018 and uh, in 2019, I moved to change healthcare. Again, it's a complete healthcare company uh, based in the US. And uh, over there, my product was more to do with teen pregnancy, um, which was completely new to me um, because I'm a mother myself. I've been pregnant and, uh, you know, I know how women health works, but uh, teen pregnancy was completely new to me. Um, I like, you know, in general, people say when you're a product manager, you have to stand in the customer's shoes like this 13 year, 14 year old girls who are pregnant, I can never stand in their shoes. Uh, probably in, as an Indian student, you can also understand all that I was worried about was uh, which group I would probably take, what will be my 10th marks, and you know how can I score better in English and Tamil sort of uh, questions is what I had as a teenager. But these girls were talking about raising kids, going to school, at the same time going for a part-time job. And their life was totally different when I went, met them in Nashville, Omaha, and interior parts of the US. And that was definitely a life-changing um, you know, event for me. Though I've been a product manager, I've done things where I've released products and all that. But this was more to do with empathy, where I understand human emotions, even if you're not able to relate to their situation, how can I be that 100% product manager and make a product for them is what I understood in that one and a half years of you know being a healthcare product manager. Then that is when my whole idea of mind and mom came in. How can I get this knowledge and save 
women in India, how can I make the whole journey of pregnancy much more easier, predicting illness and making their lives much more easier? Because it's not about just making their lives easier. It is about the question of next generation. Uh, how can I make the next generation healthier? How can I make sure their healthcare needs are taken care when they are fetus and not even see in the world? How can I predict so many things like autism, C-section and all those um, primary things which can be solved when you are not even born, but for some reason it is not solved. So we end up having kids who are unhealthy, which is also rooting to a unhealthy generation of tomorrow. So that's when my whole idea of quitting my job and then starting Mind and Mom last year during COVID happened. And COVID is also uh, life changing. Again, a life changing even for all of us, most of us, um, you know, sitting at home for you guys, how, how difficult it is, you know, attending online classes and missing all those um, meeting peers and, you know, actually having a real conversation, learning it from people and stuff like that. Same thing with me, not meeting a lot of people. And I was just thinking how how pregnant women should be facing it. Now, they need to go to the hospital. They need to take the test. At the same time, uh, the chances of them getting COVID is much, healthy, uh, much higher because their immunity is much lower compared to other people in general. How can I help them is one thought which landed me in mind and mom so that's a little bit of just about what i've done so what is ai in healthcare in general is that replacing doctors i think this question most of you might be having um is ai going to replace doctors is ai going to make a world where you don't need anybody to you know hold your hand look at the pulse and tell you oh you know what you are not healthy, maybe this for this was the reason, and you know, maybe these are the medicines that you might have to take or the surgeries. How a life will be without any doctors and completely missions. Uh, sounds a little bit like a science fiction movie, but is that what AI is a healthcare? I think it's completely no. We still need people, we still need that empathy, we still need that person to really understand that emotional intelligence and actually suggest and AI is going to support it in a, health, in a much, much higher rate. Like, I don't know how many of you have read how many lives uh, Apple Watch have saved, you know, measuring the heartbeat that it's going a little higher that you need to go to the hospital. Some sort of prediction, some sort of, um, you know, analysis or effectively diagnosing the diseases is something AI can do in medical, healthcare, and pharma. It takes years of medical training for doctors to really diagnose a disease accurately. That's something that we all know. You know, studying five years plus, uh, again, two years, three years, or whatever masters they do, all that they do is to train themselves into understand that uh, technology of healthcare. Uh, how can I suggest the right one? How can I predict something? But with AI, the diagnostics actually is going to be reducing a lot of time because this is a place where it's very, very time consuming, right? In many areas, the demand for the professionals also far exceeds like um, healthcare, let's take cancer for that matter, right? The experts in a particular thing, be it a breast cancer or a cervical cancer, the experts uh, in that space is much more lower wherein the cases are exceeding. If you see a case is exceeding, uh, for someone to become an expert in that line is going to take three, four years. Um, you know, take that um, general uh, business for that matter, right? If there is an app like Swiggy and um, you see a lot of people buying food, what happens is like, you know, you have so many people starting up like Swiggy. It might be fresh menu or it can be, you know, Zomato moving to food delivery. All that happens in a matter of five months or six months. But in healthcare, you see a surge in something. You cannot become an expert like overnight. You need a lot of training. You need a lot of, uh, you know, practice and you try that. And only then you can actually become that expert. In this space, AI can help. 
in analyzing the trends, in, in analyzing the uh, machine learning models and healthcare system that can predict patterns as a as same as a doctor, but it is not again a replacement of doctor, which can predict and then tell, uh, you know what, this is this sounds like this one. Um, you know, the end decision is always done by the doctor. And machine learning mainly helps in the areas where diagnosis data is readily available from the doctors and provided that it has been digitalized a long time back because you have experts who can store in those data and digitalize that. And that digitalized data of ML model can help the lives in the future. So the first one where the AI is actually playing a key role is effectively diagnosing the diseases. The second one where um, the AI is playing a key role is the fast prediction of drugs. So again, one place where it takes ages or at least you know, half a decade to come up with the drugs. I think we will all agree to it. COVID happened and we pretty much took an year to come up with drugs. But uh, imagine it was a time where AI and ML wasn't there in place at all. I'm sure AI and ML helped quite a bit in you know addressing this issue as well. But in general, right, it takes years together or sometimes decades together to produce drugs. But developing drug is highly expensive process also. Who is in going to invest on that? Uh, who is going to you know test and uh, require that expertise? It's going to take a lot of time. But a basic analytics of figuring out the right drugs or processing the right drug development is made efficient by uh, machine learning capabilities. And these ML models can cut down years of work and budget in hundreds and millions. Various drug development stages such as you know, identifying drug, drug candidates, uh, performing preliminary tests, identifying targets, and much more medical practices usually done much, much faster with AI and ML. The third area where the AI is going to help us or is helping us quite a bit is personalized treatment. So in the space that I live in, where pregnancy and ML prediction, right? The pregnant women in the 20s are completely different from the women in 30s and 40s. The women who has um, medical background or, you know, uh, history of uh, diseases or cancer or, um, you know, diabetes in their family are so different from someone who is having a clean history. So how am I going to make a personalized treatment? Different patients, in fact, respond to treatments in a different way. And it also includes the drug and um, so many other immense, um, you know, potential anomaly that people can get. So in those areas, the personalized data of giving your vitals and then figuring out what you could potentially have or the chances of you having it is very, very, very easily possible. And I see this one as the most, more than drug prediction, more than, you know, diagnosis of disease. This one would play a key role in the future. Today, even when you go buy something on Flipkart or Walmart, you have a personalized treatment waiting for you. And if healthcare could produce that and provide you that, I think that's the best thing instead of doing n number of tests, which is not even relevant to you, and then figuring out and then draw coming down to, okay, this might be something that I might have. Instead of that, I think personalized treatments and healthcare is going to play a key role. The fourth important one is enhanced genetics editing. Due to genetics, most of the uh, diseases like autism or uh, diabetes or health, um, you know, health wrenching diseases like heart attack happens because of genetics. And if some genetics can be played around with AI and ML, and uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about listed regulatory intercepted short palindromic. I think it's short palindromic. Yes, it is. So it's called CRISPR. Um, I think you should Google and read quite a lot about it. And recently I'm reading a lot about it after starting the startup where um, your RNA and DNAs can be altered and a potential risk of you running into some sort of disease that your ancestor have gone through 
can be totally avoided when you are pregnant itself as in like you know when a mother is pregnant itself this is again not a very developed area uh, you know researchers are working on it but if you guys can work on a short project or something in this area especially especially on cri spr i think it's a beautiful one because it's still getting developed it's still on the developing stage and if that's going to come imagine the kind of um, you know life people were going to have all healthy because health is a new wealth as we all know um when you're healthy i think everything else is taken care and imagine someone is like born with a born illness and they have to deal with the deal with it all their lives and if that is going to be taken care like when they are born itself even before they're born itself i think that's a beautiful thing that's the best gift a mother can give to her child in any any ways that's possible so these are four important areas where ai in healthcare is working out and something that you guys have to pay attention to as well so moving uh, to how we are working with this i'm going to stop for a minute to just see if you guys have any questions can i take it for no no ma'am no questions no questions right okay let me then continue so what mind and mom is doing with ai um so i'm going to just talk a little bit about what we do because um those things that whatever i told you about apple or um, you know genetics is something not i'm working on full time but this is i do on full time so i think um i can talk a little bit more about it and how did we come up with this ai models and stuff like that on a high level not on a coding level but on a high level so like i said when a mother is pregnant a lot of unhealthy signs is possible to be predicted when the baby is inside the womb itself by her vitals by the heartbeat she is having by the weight that she is gaining over time by the kind of test results that she's having with gestational diabetes with uh, so many blood pressure tests blood tests and all of it together how am i going to have these information and actually match it right so with ai with ai how is that going to be even possible um is that going to have a proper accuracy am i going to give something wrong which is not even right and you know end up giving a lot of stress to people and uh, it's it's quite a complicated because when you are saying something about health you have to be 200% sure though it doesn't work that way your accuracy can be only from 90 to 95% sometimes more than a little more than that you have to be mindful about how are you getting those information which is input how are you having what is your data set is that smaller or bigger how small it can be how big it should be and how am i going to predict it right depending upon the kind of vitals did i get the right information because sometimes when we talk about ai and ml right people get really bombarded or thinking too high level oh my god this is something like uh, robotics or something where i can't really um you know add so much value which is to be honest wrong i think we should start thinking a little more simpler about how ai and ml works let's say you want to go for a tour um considering you all all in uh, velour uh, let's take a north indian trip right so if you if you're planning between taj mahal and elora caves let's say you need more information about both the places depending upon the kind of budget you have depending upon what you do and depending upon what you get what you could buy and you know overall you you can have particular parameters on different levels and how are you going to take your decision this is as simple as that the more information you have the much better details you have your decision is also going to be clearer then you don't end up going to taj mahal and then you'll be like oh my god this is so expensive i didn't know that right the ai and ml pretty much works similar to that if you have 100 information about both taj mahal and elora 
then it's much easier. If you have only four information that, you know, there is a resort in Agra and there is there are two hotels in Elora and this is what I have, then you're going to end up having probably not a good experience or a good a journey or output, whatever. So when it comes to AI and ML, I always tell people, of course, we have AI and ML engineers and architects who always think about you know, data sets, supervised learning and unsupervised learning go too much into technology. But I always suggest that look at the problem first. Is that is that super important for us? Or do you think AI can really do a magic here? Yes, take that up and add it to it. And then add from there. Do a lot of design thinking when it comes to AI. Do a lot of reverse thinking, system thinking when it comes to AI. Just don't do it because you know Python, just because you know you know how to code or just because you have someone who can help you in AI. But with the help of AI, it is going to be much more easier. In, in over time, um, I, was, I was listening to one of the videos where uh, uh, an interviewer was asking a question like, you know, where do you think AI cannot enter at all? And the other person answered that, I think, Haircut saloons is a place where AI cannot enter at all. And then the other person replied that, you know, there are saloons which uh, predicts and then suggests which kind of uh, a haircut would probably be looking good for a particular face type and suggest the right kind of hair color. And it has been there in the industry for so long. It's not nothing new at all. So technically, there is not one place that you cannot use AI. But you have to take a decision of AI ML only when you understand the problem wisely, when you understand the whole ecosystem wisely, then comes to the picture, the AI and how can I use it? Not because, you know, there's somebody who's using it and it's pretty cool to mention the word and then I will do it. So coming back to the concept of mind and more, it collects the vitals of women during their pregnancy, depending upon the kind of bleeding they have, their, their periods, dates, and uh, kind of history they have with um, their elders, their mothers and grandmothers and their husbands, generations. And with that, we match them right, predict the information that mindfully, let's say there is a mother who has been gaining weight 10 kgs per every month. And the chances of this mother landing in C-section is quite obvious, right? But you cannot go tell them, you know what, you are going to have a C-section. It's not a way how healthcare works. This concept of being very transparent with the data could work in marketplace, could work in healthcare, uh, sorry, it could work in, uh, you know, merchant learning, it could be working in so many places, buying food online, whatever, right? But when it comes to healthcare, you have to be really, really mindful about how are you presenting this information and how are you helping them to cure it. You cannot just say this is a problem and you should also be giving a solution there. So our mobile application get this information, make it as a dashboard, but never say that you are going to get a, a C-section, but instead suggest them workouts, prenatal exercises, kind of food and habits and mindful um, you know, exercises that can solve, cure the uh, C-section in a higher level. So that's that's Mind and Mom does as a platform. And I suggest you guys to go uh, download the application. Just check how this one works. Uh, also the AI part and also the non-AI part of it, how uh, mindful, um, you know, thinking also works. Um, PS, that uh, we are also hiring interns. Um, happy to talk if you are someone who's into AI, ML, and you know would love to work for a company which is a first. Adding to the conversation, I'm also trying to hire here. So how can you start? Of course, you are in the college, and uh, I don't know how intense your AI learning or ML learning is with the with the college and your ecosystem, right? But I can suggest you to start. Um, with online courses. You don't even have to spend quite a lot of money and learn AI. Uh, you can go learn it from deeplearning.ai. It's by someone called Andrew, who has a free course. And that's where I started. In fact, that 
it's the first course I started and started loving the whole concept of AI ML and um, how I can solve a lot of problems. So that's a very good course that you can start off with. And um, there is, if you want another avenue to start off with, I think um, there is a platform called GUVI, G-U-V-I, who are in fact doing a Guinness record uh, with AI and you can access their free Python course where you can build your face recognition app out of free and you'll be part of the Guinness record as well and you get certifications and all that. I suggest you to go check their site out and access to their free courses. And you, just to understand what you do and what you like and how this can you know help you. Because when it, when it comes to finding the good spots, right? There are, there, there are some things that you are very good at and there are some things you are okay with and there are some things that you are very mediocre with you have to analyze that because ai ml everybody can do but it doesn't mean that you have to do it in what level are you going to use it if healthcare is not your cup of tea how can you um, think about ai ml in other industries that you are interested in it could be fashion it could be beauty it could be travel fitness whatever it is right but from all of it you have to have a good understanding about how this ecosystem of AI works plus the ecosystem of what you like. The moment you are able to tag them together, you are able to cross pollinate together the whole concept, then you end up having a lot of ideas. For me, healthcare really worked because I felt, okay, this is where I want to be because I've tried fashion, I've tried marketplaces, I've tried different other things. Then I felt healthcare is where my heart lies and maybe down the lane in five years, maybe something else I would love to explore too. But now I feel the cross pollination really works. So same way, just because, you know, healthcare AI is working out during COVID or whatever, doesn't mean that you have to do that, but you can always pick your sweet spot. So why, uh, though there are quite a lot of things, why now, why AI is super important now is because it's completely resetting the industry. The COVID is completely resetting the industry that we all know. The way healthcare or fashion or, um, you know, how you meet people, how you talk to people, how you date, or uh, how we meet the, you know, nutritionist or dietitian or therapist completely changed as online. I've attended Spark in person. I've, I've traveled all the way from Chennai to Velo to meet people and, you know, I've attended sessions, I've taken sessions like that. But now, look, 2021, we all do it online, still with the same impact. I'm I'm sure still with the same impact, right? Just that, you know, those when I came in person, I was able to check if somebody was uh, looking at their phone or fidgeting their mobile. Now I'm not, not able to really know that. <laughs> Apart from that, the kind of impact from I end or on the content end is pretty much the same. And if someone was someone told me that in 2019 uh, that you can probably do it online i would have felt you know i think meeting in person is much better i can meet the students and uh, it might be like you know really good but now i'm telling you this is much much easier and much much fulfilling like i can answer so many questions like how we can be connecting together uh, even after this much better connection even if it's going to be 50 people 40 people or 30 people uh, the impact is much bigger is what i think Things are things have evolved. Our mindsets have evolved, and I think this is a perfect timing for AI and ML. No matter what you do, no matter what you're interested in, I think AI and ML is going to play a key role. And all that you have to think about is how can I incorporate AI ML in a mindful way, not just because I have to do it, but in a right way that it is going to definitely help me out. So with that. I've come to the end of this short uh, AI in healthcare session, and I'm going to open the floor for some questions. And um, let's get connected on LinkedIn as well. If you think asking questions now is too mainstream, that you would like to connect with me over time and on LinkedIn, happy to. Hello. Yep. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Huh. Can you hear, ma'am, please? I'm able to hear Etiraj. Tell me. Yeah, ma'am. 
ma'am myself uh, dr ethiraj sir from uh, maharani science college for women bangalore okay okay uh, my area is data analytics uh, big data analytics and i also worked in uh, data mining completely okay so uh, few of the like the introdu- uh, introduction concepts of ai and uh, a brief overview of ai how it is working and uh, it has been applied to various fields of uh, that is a field of area of specialization i know and even uh, how we can apply for uh, data mining through like uh, same uh, machine learning approach may weka is there right weka machine learning so uh, i my problem is like uh, uh, ai with robotics hmm. ai related to robotics and uh, some of the concepts like uh, smartphone smart home smart home you can hear ma'am is i am able to hear you uh, yeah. so the concept of uh, nowadays iot that is internet of things okay and ai concepts that is how to implement the smart home mm-hmm. and how to implement the uh, concept of smartness in industry also okay. so those concepts can you give some of the uh, real world problems to work on and uh, related to healthcare the exact okay. like uh, how to detect the cancer cancer disease or uh, what you are telling like uh, for the women uh, that is uh, sure, sure, the maturity sure. uh, that is uh, so basically uh, want the yeah, like some case. of the real world which is, which can be worked and uh, which i can suggest to my because we have pg course as well as uh, ug so okay. for the for applying for the projects so okay. they can work, they are working on uh, basic like uh, data mining and machine learning and uh, some of the basics of ai not actually the real world uh, i get it uh, i get it. scenario i think so i thought it can be worked for the society sure because sure because we have the star scheme you may be heard of star scheme right through dst that is department of science and technology so we have other projects which can be gone through star scheme so for even you even for ug students because ours is a women's college they are uh, well versatile to do any kind of project what we have assigned and it okay. will be worked for the society so uh, okay. what i'm asking is uh, what kind of problem we can suggest for them which can be used use for the society sure, sure. purpose i got your question atraj let me answer yeah, that sure so i think over time like i just told you right like the past one year uh, healthcare has come up with so many different problems right uh, so many different problems not necessarily just with cancer but so many other types of uh, diseases or how can i solve this um, how can i change or how can i reduce the doctor's visit the main problem that we are having now is that you cannot go to the hospital yeah man the- yeah that one only i want yeah without yeah. the doctor advice now recently like we are getting the whatsapp messages since sure. the pandemic is going on without sure. going to the doctor advise a uh, few of the app seeing that particular app uh, through isolation in home only so we okay. can survive our own uh, uh, this thing right get it get it, get it. So, so that kind uh, of thing yeah. yeah when you want to suggest um, you know projects like that you can yeah. pick a lot of problems that people face on covid during covid because uh, these are new problems that people have been really solved when it comes to data set as well if they need a data set that that can be procured and you know it's something that can be collected with a proper research um the the co- because you are in the college where you know you can connect with the hospital uh yeah, yeah. be a government hospital and uh, like when we want a data sets we are incubated inside uh, it madras and uh, it madras really helped us because it was through a college it is through an institution you can you have the luxury of access to the doctors or hospitals that who are ready to give you at least a basic level of details that you know out of 190 are you know getting affected through this and that so those things can be you know gotten and you can work on those things like how telehealth can help telehealth is another thing which is which is growing tele telehealth 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 okay Yeah. Telehealth is nothing but like you know what we are doing uh, as a video call dermatologists okay. you know uh, other other hospitals and doctors they become totally telehealth like uh, when you have a proper normal fever cold and all that you can temp- check your temperature and tell the doctor that i am having one or two doctor what am i supposed to you know take now so this also um, you know enhances to the 
women who are pregnant where you know they, they are not able to go yeah, to the hospital exactly like they can collect their vitals and send it to them yeah yeah how can yeah, you yeah. predict with those vitals you can pick any types of diseases um you know i just gave an example of covid and uh, yeah. pregnancy but any types of diseases you can do a little bit of research during covid who are the most affected one is that kids or is that elders uh, yeah. women who are going through menopause so many uh, areas which is not addressed properly right uh, women yeah. usually go through menopause and uh, doctors help them now they are also old they are also not able to go to the hospital how that can be solved with the data set how yeah, uh, yeah. So if that person is going to be 45 to 48 years old yeah age how, through be between age between 20 to 30 or 30 to 40 that kind of uh, limits like uh, we can incorporate uh, uh, based on the uh like virtualization concept we can uh, give the classification format right correct correct through the age factor between 20 to 40 and 40 to 60 and 60 to 80 so we can give a classification like through a gender format we can consider as a data set and we can uh, start absolutely right like yeah. you can come up with classify. a lot first the thing is classification based on the age factor and based on the gender and based on their uh, health uh, perception right no i think first you should come up with a problem statement yeah and then yeah, yeah. these things will just follow right if you're going to pick uh, let's say no, what i'm telling is based on covid scenario because uh, the second pandemic uh, second wave is uh, predicted because in our bangalore i am staying in bangalore right now so mm -hmm. bangalore is affected totally in between the age 20 to 40 more compared okay. to the other ages so okay. so that is the thing yeah yes yes and uh, even the prediction is like the first uh, attack who was all got uh, that is through covid they will be they are not getting it is newly it has been arrived for the newly persons <coughs> okay cool yeah i think yeah. i answered you etra yeah 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 definitely thanks a lot thank you sure, thank you thank any thank other you, questions that we have from the students as well yes uh, i i had a question actually Uh, sure. You were mentioning some domains in okay. which AI can be used. So one of those domains that you mentioned was fitness. So yes. have you explored that topic, and uh, do you have any applications for that domain in particular that you you know might have explored yeah, previously? Sure, sure. So mind and mom is all about that. So where um, when you get the vitals, when you get the information, or as an output, what you give is the fitness uh, exercises that you can do at home. Uh, you can tether it on your TV and uh, take up that type of fitness exercises. I myself, um, you know, I'm very interested in fitness. Like right before um, my early twenties, so I've always. i always felt you know fitness can solve so many problems that we have in life when it comes to health so it's the same thing with pregnant women as well if you take care of yourself through fitness in the right way i think a lot of diseases a lot of uh, complications can be solved so mind and mom suggest on an every day basis women get pregnant for 280 days all 280 days depending upon their uh, stage and depending upon their health the exercises are suggested Ah, okay. Thanks. So this is specific to like this particular case of fitness. So like, correct. It is to uh, to do. I was wondering like about like. Ah, uh, I was wondering if like this concept could be like applied to like a more general population, because like yeah. everyone can benefit from fitness in some way or the other. Correct. 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 Good idea. Well, um, maybe you and me should work on some ideas like that. <laughs> but right now i become really <laughs> super niche because this kind of uh, care prenatal is uh, not definitely general so i wanted to work on it because as a personal value i wanted to do something for the women and upliftment of them um, but general is also a good idea healthify me does it cult does it and um, i really like it yeah yeah okay thanks thanks for answering my question thank you so much Do we have any other questions? Okay, I think um if there are no other questions if i mean even if you get questions late at the later stage feel free to ping me on LinkedIn we can be connected on LinkedIn and i can help you 
as much as I can. And if you're looking for an internship Hello? or something, yeah. like can you give your mail ID? Sorry, can you uh, uh, give your mail ID, ma'am? Mail ID. Mail ID. Okay, my email ID is pjanaki at mindandmom dot com. Pjanaki at mindandmom.com mind okay mind m i n d mind a n d mom m o m dot com okay thanks a lot thank you ma'am thank you thank you welcome sir welcome sir ma'am would you mind writing it in a chat box oh yeah and your details oh, yeah. also yes i i've given it in the chat box that you can take it from good afternoon ma'am uh, i am uh, speaking from ganpat university from gujarat okay. uh, we also yeah. run an isa chapter in our college okay. so okay. i came across this event and i joined it and i really liked it and i i would like I know uh, I'm just gig, gig, talking to you informally, but I would like for you to have a session in our college also. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You can send out a mail. Okay, ma'am. I'll, I'll send you an email. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you so much for joining the session on a Sunday morning again. I hope the 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever we spent together was uh, helpful in some ways. Yes, a lot. It's a lot. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. It was a great session. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. you so much, Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. It was, was a very nice session, here. very useful session for us. Mm -hmm. Very nice session. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you so thank much. You, have a great, have a great Sunday. Bye. To you. Thank you.